Hi, I'm Ivan Zudin. Welcome into another video from Jatai Academy. You've come to rely on Jatai Academy for great education and information as a beauty and barber professional. And this video will be another video just adding to the extensive library we have available to help you grow your business. I want to go to the mailbag today. We had a question from a regular viewer and the question was, have you got any tips, tricks, or pointers for dealing with, as they put it, toxic clients? Kind of alluding to the notion of, how do you fire a client? Well, let me tell you a little story. I want to tell you a story about Marsha. Many of you that know me from the professional beauty industry and have heard me at classes and speak in programs and presentations might have heard me tell the Marsha story before. The reason you might have heard it is, I like to tell the story. I like to tell the story because it's true. And I like to tell the story because I think it perfectly illustrates the kind of situations we find ourselves in in the industry with challenging clients. It illustrates what I thought was a great solution at the time. And in retrospect, I still think it was a pretty great solution. And it also helps you maybe set some ground rules or establish some boundaries for how things will happen within your business to help you not only maintain the mood, the temperament, and the tone of your business, but also your own sanity and mental health for the long term. You know, we're in a business where we like to say, you can't take care of them if you don't take care of you. And I think that's so important when it comes to the way in which we're taught to give and do and be for our clients every minute of every day, it can wear on you. It can add up. And every once in a while, there's that one client that just kind of pushes a button. So let me tell you the story about Marsha. Marsha was a client and Marsha was never happy. Marsha would come in to get her hair cut. She'd sit down for the consultation and I'd say, Marsha, what are we going to do today? And Marsha would say things like, well, it doesn't really matter. You never do a good job anyway. Seriously, she said that to me. Or she'd say things like, say things like, how do you want your hair cut today? And she'd go, I don't care. I'm never happy. That was Marsha. She was never happy. So one day, kind of got to the end of that rope. And you know with those problem clients, where are they in the appointment book? You ever noticed? They're either the first appointment in the morning and they ruin your whole day, or they're the last appointment in the end of the day. And every half hour when you walk up front and you look at the appointment book and you go, she's still in there. And really you start to cook. She ruins the whole day. You can't let these kind of things happen. I couldn't let this happen anymore. So the next time Marcia came in for a haircut, sat down in my chair, I took control of the situation. And I said to her, hey, Marsha, you know what? Today's a very special day. What do you mean? She says. I said, well, Marsha, today's the last time I'm ever going to cut your hair. What are you talking about? And I said, well, Marsha, I want you to be happy. It's important to me that you're happy. So here's the deal, Marsha. I'm going to cut your hair today. And the next time you're ready for a haircut, you're going to call me. And I'm going to give you three choices. Choice number one is you can pick any hair cutter on my team. I had 24 hair cutters on my team. You can pick any hair cutter on my team and I will pay for them to cut your hair because I want you to be happy. Choice number two is I'll pick a member of my team that I know can make you happy and I'll make an appointment with them for you and I'll pay for it and you'll get your hair cut by somebody on my team because I want you to be happy. I said, Marsha, choice number three is you can pick any hair salon in the greater Chicago metropolitan area where we live. You can pick any hair cutter at any hair salon. I will call on the telephone. I will give them my credit card number. I will book your appointment with them because I want you to be happy. So Marsha says, I'll just cut my hair. So I cut her hair and she leaves. Well, about five weeks later, Marsha is in my appointment book. I see her name. So I call her on the phone. I said, hey, Marsha, it's Ivan from the salon. Yeah, what's up? I said, I see you got an appointment next week with me and I don't cut your hair anymore. So it's a mistake. I'm taking it out of the book. And Marcia says, oh, no, 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 no. You have to cut my hair. And I said, aha, I don't have to cut your hair. I said, Marcia, you know, I'd love to cut your hair. Marcia, I want to cut your hair. Being turned away by the hairstylist, being ostracized by the hairdresser, being excised from my community, would be a serious social issue for her. You gotta remember, I cut her kids, I cut her husband, I cut her mom, I cut her sister, I cut her sister's husband, I cut everybody in her whole social circle. How was she gonna tell these people, I even won't cut my hair anymore? What I said to her is, I said, can't cut your hair anymore. Remember, I'm gonna make you an appointment with one of my people or somewhere else. And she says, oh, don't be silly. You have to cut my hair. I said, I can cut your hair, but there's gonna be rules. 
She said, rules? What kind of rules? I said, here are the rules, Marsha. The rules are when you show up, when you walk in my shop, you say hello. And when we're done cutting your hair, at the end of the experience, you say thank you and you say goodbye. And in between hello, goodbye, and thank you, you're not allowed to say anything anymore. You just have to be quiet because it's too disruptive to me and the entire shop. And Marcia says to me, true story, Marcia says, well, just leave my appointment in the book. I'm coming in. Long story short, I cut Marcia's hair for almost 10 more years. And I never, ever, ever once had a problem with Marcia. She was wonderful, sweet, nice, friendly, happy, and easy to deal with every day from that point forward. At some point, you got to draw a line in the sand. You got to let people know what kind of behavior is or isn't okay. And if you're honest with yourself, I want you to think about your customers. I want you to think about your business. I want you to think about what happens at your chair. If you're honest with yourself, you probably have some clients that you don't enjoy serving. They're not bad people, but they're people that you do not enjoy the process of serving them in a beauty and barber environment. And if you're honest with yourself about these people and you're honest with yourself about these situations, I think you will probably recognize that the reason you're uncomfortable, dissatisfied, anxious, the reason you don't enjoy the process of serving these individuals is because these are individuals to whom at some point in time you relinquished control of the chair. You let somebody tell you Oh, no, 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 no. Little Billy doesn't like the clipper. Little Billy is seven. When did he get to choose? Oh, no, no, no. I want you to cut my hair with that kind of comb. What? I'm sorry. I have a cosmetology license. I think you're a tax accountant. How about you let me do my job? But you played along. You went along. Clients that come in and tell you, I'm going to bring you my hair color and you're going to color my... No, you're not. You've got to maintain control of the chair. Think about it. It's a square space. It's 25 square feet. It's five feet wide, five feet deep, and there's a hairstyling chair in the middle of it. It is the only piece of planet Earth that you have control over. And my suggestion and recommendation for you is kindly, nicely, calmly, professionally, slow down, speak slowly, speak clearly, Speak very deliberately so they know exactly what you mean and tell people what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. And for those clients that don't want to participate, there's a couple of hundred thousand hair cutters in the United States of America. And I'm sure you know one that you'd like to send Marsha to. Take control of your chair, take control of your career, and everything in this business works out great. You can't take care of them if you don't take care of you. I'm Ivan Zoot on behalf of Jatai Academy, J-A-T-A-I dot net on the web. Ivanzoot.com is where you find me and you find great education right here at Jatai. Thanks for watching and have a great day.